From miracles on mountainsides to healings by the hand, Jesus' life defied the impossible. But even the Son of God wasn't spared the trials that test the mightiest souls. We're journeying to the 24 hours where fate took a turn, where shadows of betrayal crept in, and the weight of destiny threatened to crush even the divine. These aren't the triumphant verses of the Gospels. This is the untold story, the 24 hours before the cross, where faith faced its most brutal test. Buckle up, because we're diving into the most fateful 24 hours in human history. Thursday, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., The Last Supper. As the Jerusalem sun dips low, casting long shadows across the city, a special dinner unfolds in a simple upstairs room. Jesus gathers his 12 disciples for the Passover meal, a tradition that celebrates freedom from slavery. In a meaningful gesture, Jesus takes bread, gives thanks, and breaks it into pieces. He then shares it with his disciples, their eyes reflecting a mix of respect and a little worry. This isn't just any meal. Jesus knows what's about to happen, and he uses this special dinner to share something important. Here in the quiet room, Jesus tells his friends one last thing to remember, something that will be important forever. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. These simple words become the heart of his teachings, a message that will define his life's work. Even though Jesus is about to face betrayal and danger, he offers them words of comfort. I leave you with peace, Jesus assures them, a peace that's different from anything the world offers. Don't be worried or afraid. These words soothe their worried hearts and give them strength for what's to come. In a final act of incredible humility, Jesus acts like a servant. He kneels before his friends, one by one, and washes their dirty feet. This simple action, unexpected from a teacher, shows the core of his message, putting others first, showing love, and being helpful. Thursday, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., prayer and agony at Gethsemane. As night deepens in Jerusalem, Jesus seeks solace in the quiet solitude of the Garden of Gethsemane. Here, amidst the whispering leaves and ancient olive trees, he retreats to pray. The weight of the coming betrayal and suffering hangs heavy in the air. In a moment of profound anguish, Jesus falls to his knees, his heart overflowing with emotion. He pours out his soul to his Father, pleading for strength as he faces the unimaginable. My Father, Jesus cries out, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. These words, filled with both human fear and unwavering faith, reveal the depth of the struggle within him. In this place of both tranquility and torment, Jesus wrestles with the immense burden of his divine mission. He knows the path ahead leads to unimaginable suffering and sacrifice, yet he remains resolute in his commitment to fulfilling his destiny. Meanwhile, Jesus' disciples entrusted with keeping watch succumb to human frailty. Exhaustion and fear cloud their judgment and they falter in their support. Unable to grasp the true gravity of the moment, they drift off to sleep, leaving Jesus to face his inner turmoil alone. Thursday, 11 p.m. to Friday, 12 a.m., the kiss of Judas and the betrayal. The quiet of the night is shattered as a figure emerges from the shadows. In the heart of the Garden of Gethsemane, a dark betrayal unfolds, orchestrated by Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' own disciples. With a deceitful kiss, Judas marks Jesus for capture. This gesture, meant to symbolize affection, becomes a chilling act of treachery. Earlier that evening, Jesus, with a heavy heart, had spoken of this betrayal. One of you will betray me, he warned. Judas, driven by greed and a twisted sense of purpose, had struck a deal with the religious authorities. Blinded by earthly desires, he agreed to hand Jesus over for 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave. A trusted confidant, Judas had harbored this darkness in his heart all along. For a mere pittance, he was willing to sell out the Son of God, the man who had called him friend. Led by Judas' treachery, the authorities descend upon the garden. Jesus, with unwavering resolve, prepares to face his destiny. Friday, 
12 a.m. to 1 a.m. dard, the disciples abandon Jesus. As the clock strikes midnight, marking a pivotal moment in the Garden of Gethsemane, a heavy silence descends as a stark reality sets in Jesus, betrayed and captured, is left to face his fate alone. Just hours earlier, these men had pledged their unwavering loyalty. They had boasted of standing by Jesus' side, no matter the cost. Yet, in this darkest hour, fear and confusion overwhelm them. One by one, the disciples scatter into the night. Peter, who moments ago declared his undying allegiance, flees in terror. The others, consumed by fear for their safety, abandon the very man they had vowed to follow. Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Their human frailty is laid bare, their earlier promises shattered by the weight of the situation. They simply cannot comprehend the events unfolding around them. Despite the crushing weight of betrayal and abandonment, Jesus stands firm. He does not falter in his commitment to fulfilling his divine mission. He accepts this path, a path paved with suffering yet ultimately leads to redemption. Friday 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. Jesus before Annas and Caiaphas. Under the shroud of darkness, a brutal act unfolds. Soldiers and officials storm through Jerusalem, seizing Jesus of Nazareth. This marks the beginning of a long, agonizing night for Jesus, filled with trials and tribulations. Jesus, stripped of his freedom, is first brought before Annas, a powerful figure who used to be the high priest. Annas, the father-in-law of the current high priest Caiaphas, still wields significant influence within the religious hierarchy. Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas. Under Annas' piercing stare, Jesus endures a series of questions and accusations. The religious leaders desperately seek any evidence, any transgression, to justify condemning him. Despite the accusations and hostility, Jesus remains unwavering. Even as accusations fly and his words are twisted, Jesus remains resolute in his identity as the Son of God. He stands as a witness to truth, a beacon in the darkness of this unjust trial. As the night progresses, Jesus' journey continues. He is taken from Annas' house to the residence of Caiaphas, the current high priest. Another ordeal awaits him there, before Caiaphas and the assembled council. Jesus faces a barrage of false accusations and mockery. These men, blinded by fear and ambition, conspire to silence the truth and orchestrate his death. Despite the chaos and injustice, Jesus maintains his composure. Friday, 3 a.m., Peter's Denial of Jesus. As the early hours crawl by, a separate drama unfolds in the shadows, a drama of betrayal and human weakness. While Jesus endures interrogation inside Caiaphas' house, Peter waits anxiously outside, his heart filled with trepidation. Peter, who just hours ago boasted of unwavering loyalty, now finds himself facing a test of his faith. The chaos and growing hostility surrounding Jesus' trial create a suffocating atmosphere, pushing Peter to the brink. He denied it again, with an oath, I don't know the man, Matthew 26, 72. Under the watchful eyes of these strangers, Peter is confronted. The pressure mounts and fear takes hold. He denies any knowledge of Jesus, the man he once called Lord, his voice trembling with a mix of fear and shame. With each denial, Peter delves deeper into a web of deceit. His earlier declarations of loyalty crumble under the weight of fear revealing the vulnerability of human nature. A rooster crows in the distance, a stark reminder of Jesus' words. Peter's facade crumbles as the gravity of his betrayal dawns on him. Shame and regret wash over his face as he realizes the magnitude of his failure. Friday, 4 a.m., the soldiers mock Jesus. In the pre-dawn hours, amidst the darkness and chaos of Jesus' trial, a scene of cruelty and mockery unfolds, a scene that lays bare the depths of human depravity. As Jesus stands bound and defenseless, the soldiers guarding him unleash their cruelty, subjecting him to verbal taunts and physical abuse. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, 
Messiah, prophecy, who got you? As Jesus stands bound and defenseless, the soldiers guarding him unleash their cruelty, subjecting him to verbal taunts and physical abuse. Blindfolding Jesus, they challenge him to prophesy and reveal the identity of his tormentors, a mockery of his divine authority, and a cruel reminder of his impending fate. Even amidst the mockery and abuse, Jesus endures with grace and resilience, his silence a testament to his unwavering commitment to fulfill the Father's will. Friday, 5 a.m., Jesus before the Sanhedrin. As the sun rises over Jerusalem, a moment of immense consequence unfolds within the Sanhedrin chambers. The fate of Jesus hangs precariously in the balance as the council convenes to deliver their final judgment. The weight of their decision hangs heavy in the air. The leaders, fueled by a desire to maintain their authority and a fear of Jesus' growing influence, deliberate amongst themselves. Despite the barrage of false accusations and the palpable hostility, Jesus remains unfazed. His eyes hold a quiet strength, reflecting his unwavering fight and his unwavering trust in his Father's will. With a heavy heart, yet resolute in their determination, the Sanhedrin members reach their verdict. They declare Jesus guilty, condemning him to death. This unjust decision sets in motion a chain of events that will culminate in his crucifixion. Friday, 6 a.m., Jesus before Pilate. As dawn breaks over Jerusalem, a pivotal day unfolds. Jesus is led from the chambers of the Sanhedrin to the Praetorium of Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. Here, in the grandeur of Pilate's palace, the fate of Jesus hangs precariously in the balance. John 18.33 Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Pilate, a man of authority with a hint of curiosity, awaits Jesus. In this opulent setting, Pilate will question Jesus about his claims to kingship. Does Jesus pose a threat to Roman rule? Friday, 7 a.m., Jesus before Herod. Jesus is then taken from Pilate's court to the lavish court of Herod Antipas, a tetrarch known for his wealth and political maneuvering. In this extravagant environment, Herod and his court subject Jesus to mockery and ridicule. They treat him as a mere curiosity, a spectacle for their entertainment. Despite the cruel treatment, Jesus remains composed. His inner strength and faith are unshaken by the jeers of his tormentors. Friday, 8 a.m., Jesus sent back to Pilate and condemned. Jesus is returned to Pilate, the tension thick in the air. The Roman governor faces a difficult decision, caught between a desire for justice and the pressure from the crowd and the religious leaders. In a desperate attempt to appease the crowd and quell the growing unrest, Pilate offers a choice. Release Jesus, the innocent man, or Barabbas, a notorious criminal. The crowd, swayed by their emotions and the influence of the religious leaders, roars for Jesus' blood. Their cries drown out any sense of reason or justice. Faced with the angry mob and political pressure, Pilate succumbs. He reluctantly orders Jesus to be flogged and then crucified, a decision that will forever stain his conscience. Friday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., Jesus carries the cross to Calvary. The weight of the day hangs heavy in the air. As the sun climbs higher, a somber procession emerges from Pilate's palace. In the center, bearing the crushing weight of a wooden cross, walks Jesus. Carrying his cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. John 19.17 Every step is a struggle. The rough-hewn wood digs into his already wounded shoulders, a constant reminder of the ordeal that awaits him. He carries not just the weight of the cross, but the weight of the world's sins. This is the path to Calvary, the place of the skull, the place of execution. The jeers and taunts of the crowd create a cacophony of cruelty. Amidst the chaos, Jesus endures the relentless torment. Yet his gaze remains fixed on a point beyond the jeering crowd. His focus is unwavering, his faith a beacon in the darkness. In a moment of unexpected grace, a man named Simon of Cyrene is compelled to share Jesus' burden. This simple act offers a brief respite a glimmer of humanity amidst the overwhelming cruelty. The journey continues. The destination draws closer with each agonizing step. But even on this path of suffering, a spark of compassion shines through, 
a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit. Friday, 12 a.m. to 1 p.m., the crucifixion of Jesus. The sun hangs high in the sky, casting harsh shadows on the scene unfolding at Golgotha, the place of the skull. Jesus arrives, the weight of the cross etched on his weary body. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Matthew 27, 35. With each agonizing blow, Jesus is secured to the cross. His body hangs suspended a stark symbol of both suffering and sacrifice. Yet, even in the face of unimaginable pain, his spirit remains unbroken. Below the cross, soldiers callously divide Jesus' garments amongst themselves, casting lots for his seamless robe. Their indifference adds a layer of cruelty to the already horrific scene. In a whisper that carries immense power, Jesus speaks words of forgiveness and compassion. His love transcends the pain and suffering, offering a beacon of hope amid darkness. On this hill of Golgotha, on this stark stage of sacrifice, Jesus endures the ultimate test. His crucifixion becomes a testament to the enduring power of love, even in the face of death. Friday, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., Jesus and his mother. In the shadow of the cross, amidst the agony and anguish, a tender moment unfolds, a son's love for his mother, a disciple's devotion to his Lord. With his dying breaths, Jesus looks upon his mother, Mary, and the disciple whom he loved, and speaks words of profound love and care. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. John 19, 26. In a gesture of selflessness and compassion, Jesus entrusts the care of his beloved mother to the disciple, ensuring that she will be cared for in his absence. As Mary weeps for her son, the disciple embraces his newfound responsibility, standing by her side as a beacon of comfort and support. Friday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., the death of Jesus. As the afternoon wears on and the shadows lengthen, Jesus utters his final words, a prayer of surrender and trust, echoing through the ages. With a voice that reverberates through the depths of eternity, Jesus cries out to his Father, committing his spirit into the hands of the one who sent him. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. In the moment of his death, a profound stillness envelops the hill of Golgotha, a silence pregnant with the weight of humanity's sin and the depth of God's love. As Jesus yields up his spirit, the world stands at the threshold of redemption, a moment of profound sorrow and unimaginable grace. Friday, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., the Centurion. As the hour grows late and the sky darkens, a Roman centurion stands vigil at the foot of the cross, his heart stirred by the events unfolding before him. With eyes that have witnessed countless acts of brutality and death, the centurion watches as Jesus breathes his last, his heart and mind grappling with the magnitude of what he has witnessed. In a moment of profound clarity and revelation, the centurion declares his belief in Jesus' divine identity, his words ringing out against the backdrop of the fading day. As the echoes of his proclamation fade into the gathering darkness, the centurion's confession reverberates through the hearts of all who hear it, a testament to the power and majesty of the crucified Messiah. Friday, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Jesus' burial in the sepulcher. As the shadows lengthen and the day draws to a close, two unlikely disciples, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, emerge from the crowd, bearing spices and linen, to prepare Jesus' body for burial, Matthew 27, 60, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. With reverence and solemnity, Joseph and Nicodemus attend to Jesus' body, wrapping it in linen and anointing it with spices before placing it in a tomb hewn from solid rock. The stone is rolled in front of the tomb and the entrance sealed. A profound sense of finality descends upon Golgotha, the end of one chapter in the unfolding drama of redemption. In the stillness of the evening, Jesus' body lies in the darkness of the tomb, 
his earthly ministry seemingly at an end. But the story is far from over. As we conclude this glimpse into the last 24 hours of Jesus' life, a profound silence hangs heavy. These hours were a crucible of suffering, a stark reminder of the cost of love and the weight of sacrifice. Yet, amidst the darkness, a flicker of hope remains. Do these final moments hold the key to understanding the power of faith and the promise of redemption? <laughs>